something very important in the news this morning is an analysis on the national state of disaster and the fact that it only extends for a certain period of time. Uh, the headline in News24 reads, The national state of disaster ends before court deadline to amend lockdown regulations. Remember the high court judgment that I started going into detail with you said that the government has two weeks to basically amend the lockdown level three regulations so that it actually complies with the constitution as it was found completely un unconstitutional and was set aside. So in this article, we discuss the fact that the actual state of disaster as a predetermined time period under our constitution and the question we need to ask is where the government will extend this because it is possible to extend it by one month periods now it's going to be interesting to see whether the government actually does this or not and this end date is the 14th of this month which is before the time period whereby the government needs to give feedback to the court on the changes that they are willing to make to these rights that we have and then change the regulations to actually accommodate our rights under the constitution. The article reads that the national state of disaster lapses on 14th of June after having been in place for three months, which is a long period of time, people. The High Court judgment has given on Corsazana Luminisima 14 days to amend lockdown regulations, but this deadline takes place after the national state of disaster actually ends. If the national state of disaster is not extended, the lockdown regulations will not need to be amended as they will have no legal bearing. So here is a clear opportunity in a time frame for us to actually put pressure on government to stop the state of disaster in the lockdown regulations and actually start just teaching people good principles with regards to how you should live in general to avoid getting sick. And this is what I absolutely advocate for, to give people the freedom to choose because that is what liberty actually is and it's something I fully support. There are certain places where things become more complicated and I mean schools are certainly some of those where children are sitting on top of each other. Schools are generally a disease and virus and bacteria hotspot and even my children have become sick because of exposure to other children at school. So there are certain instances where I believe people should take the necessary care but in general, people should be able to make decisions for themselves based on a certain threat. And once a threat is highlight, highlighted pro properly and proven to people, people will take those actions themselves. And if government cannot reach people in informal settlements, then they need to change how they govern. And that is why I keep on speaking about changing our governance system that we have a bottom-up approach instead of a top-down approach because then we wouldn't have the issues and the problems that we have right now. While the Gauteng High Court in Pretoria has ordered that the lockdown regulations which were declared invalid and unconstitutional be amended within 14 days, the national state of disaster is set to lapse before that deadline. On Tuesday, Judge Norman Davis found that while the declaration of a national state of disaster to fight the COVID-19 pandemic was rational, Many of the promulgated regulations for level 4 and 3 of the lockdown were not rationally connected to the objectives of slowing the rate of infection or limiting the spread of the virus. The judgment handed down in the High Court followed the urgent application brought by the Liberty Fighters Network and the Hola Bono Renaissance Movement. Now, I've covered most of that before. Davis ordered that the promulgated regulations which have been declared invalid be reviewed, amended and republished by the Minister and Kosozana Luminizuma, who is the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. And Kosozana Luminizuma, within 14 days of the judgment, needs to come and give feedback to the court on how they're going to change the regulations, but not if the disaster is not extended. This effectively means that if government does not appeal the judgment, it would have until 19th of June to make the changes. However, if the current national state of disaster, which officially ends on June 14, is not extended, then the current regulations, whether amended or not, will no longer have any legal bearing. Now, based on what government has said before, it is clear that they are probably going to try and extend the state of disaster, and they can do so under the Act. 
whether the act is actually suited, like I've said before, towards a pandemic is a different question and a different topic. And when I do a video on the further judge, further detail on this judgment, you it will be clear to you, especially in the next video that will follow, that there is no way that our Disaster Management Act actually looks after pandemics. It actually is more geared towards floods, fires, earthquakes, that type of thing. According to the Disaster Management Act of 2002, the national state of disaster lapses three months after they has been declared. Can you believe it? We're almost three months into this mess. Tlamini Zuma declared the national state of disaster on 14th of March this year, citing the magnitude and severity of the COVID-19 outbreak and taking into account the need to augment the existing measures to deal with the pandemic. The DMA does make provisions for the extension of the national state of disaster for a period of one month at a time, which can be extended by notice in the government gazette. Now, based on what the government has said, it looks like they might be extending this for quite a few times, unless the public actually puts pressure on them to change their mind. And I don't think the public showing that we behave is going to change their mind at all, because they are control freaks and they like to control our lives, the judge has actually made that clear in his judgment. Dr. Kathy Powell, an associate professor in public law at the University of Cape Town, explained that the DMA and substantially uh, and subsequently the declaration of the national state of disaster is the legal basis on which the regulations depend. So you cannot have these regulations without the state of disaster. This is now the level 3, 4 and 5 regulations and even 2 and 1. If the national state of disaster is extended and the judgment hasn't been appealed, okay, then the judgment is still enforceable as the existing regulations would carry over with the extension. Law experts James Grant said if the judgment isn't appealed and the national state of disaster is not extended, then the regulations would no longer have any binding force. He noted, however, that the judgment would still have a bearing on what has already transpired to the extent that these regulations have already impacted people's lives in one way or another. So people can actually take action because of this judgment. And this is what he is inferring here, that we've already been damaged by these regulations that were set aside and called illegal and irrelevant and unconstitutional. So we are supposed to take action, hold the government to account in the best way that we can. And at this stage, the court is the only way we can do that which is a problem, as I've explained before. <clears throat> Grant was also of the view that the chance of the judgment not being appealed was slim, and that once there was an appeal, the judgment would be suspended. Lamini Zuma spokesperson Mulungisi and Charlie told News24 that it would discuss the overall status of the national state of disaster and its response to the pandemic, after which an announcement on the next step to be taken would be made. Now, it is important here to understand that we as citizens of the country only have the courts as recourse. Because of the way our governance system works, we actually have no way of influencing that government once they are instituted, once the president is sworn in after being elected by parliament, because we do not elect the president, that person can then act in their office. To remove them from office is a parliamentary function. We have no function in our constitution to remove a president or remove a minister or remove a mayor or a premier or a councillor. None. And this, in my mind, is unconstitutional. In other words, the very constitution that's supposed to protect us actually overrides some of its own rights that it gives you in other parts of the constitution. And after studying the constitution, I realized that there's quite a few Trojan horses built in and that'll be the topic of another video that I will make. But at this stage, there's many uncertainties with regards to what will happen with a state of disaster. I think the government, based on what they've done up until now, will probably try to extend it. If they appeal this judgment in the court, then it's, go it's going to take a long time. The, the appeal process and who suffers in the end, we do. So it's very important that we take action in our own lives and start demanding that the governance system is changed to put the power in our hands. Because with this party system currently, it is not. It is in the hands of a couple of gangs sitting in parliament.